Hi guys, uh, yet another wee update of my exploits filming. Today we are on the Upper Gary, which is absolutely stunning. It's 15 degrees in March, late March. Snow blizzard about five days ago. Actually, the last diary I did was five days ago. Uh, have a look. How special is that? Yeah, so today what we're doing, I'm with the tea hatchery board and Mike and Marek uh, are the stars for the day and they are planting I'd ova and eggs into the upper gary. Um, to say it's a good day of filming, really beautiful light, as you can tell, great story. And this project's for um, a NASCO funded uh, project with the M FMS, Fisheries Management Scotland, uh, for a series all about hatcheries and aquaculture and habitat, etc. Lots, lots of things to cover. The Upper Gary's really interesting. I won't, I won't let the cat out of the bag if you don't already know, but it's been rewatered, big fights with SSE, etc. To get it to this point but now everybody's of an understanding and constantly got water in fact there's probably more water in it now i was just told than there would be normally uh, because of the compensation flow or whatever you want to call it so yeah really cool project eggs are going in uh whatever your thoughts are on hatcheries whatever your opinions are on hatcheries these guys are working hard uh it might not look like it right now because it's such a beautiful but they were saying last time they were up here was a foot and a half of snow. Uh, they were kicking icebergs out of the way when they were trying to put the eggs in. Um, up and use shovels and pipes um, to, to basically stop them as natural as we possibly can into the... They've been filming the long lens. Uh, we wide angle there. Got decent wireless audio on mic. So you can give us a voiceover while he's working away. You hear the gravel screeching while he's digging. Uh, basically a running commentary. Uh, more camera gear. Uh, gimbal, another camera. And I'm just about to go in to do the uh, formal interview uh, with Mike. So I'm going to get him to sit. A nice point there with the light coming in the river behind him. Um, I'm going to get him to sit and I'll just ask him a series of questions and it'll come across a bit like a monologue um, with, you know, all these beautiful cutaways that I've been collecting all day with him. Real privilege to be out here today, truly. Um, driving up the A9, it was like heart palpitations because I haven't travelled for quite a wee while with lockdown, but uh, my work uh, allows me to do this. I'm very, very lucky. Uh, uh, doing grid stock fitting in the autumn. So when we produce the first lot of eggs from those salmon, we call them maidens. When we subsequently recondition those salmon, so we encourage them to feed again. And then the, the years after that, they produce more and more eggs for the river, which we see as free eggs for the catchment. And um, we call them reconditioned eggs. So effectively, the, the these salmon would probably have demised uh, in the wild. Most salmon only get to spawn once. So this project is uh, restoration of the Gary. And the Gary basically had no water in it or um, I don't know how long, but all will be revealed in the story. Um, there was no water in it, obviously no salmon in it, no fish could run it, so no stock. So Almond Bank is restoring the stocks of salmon in the Upper Gary uh, using reconditioned kelps, um, which are basically free eggs, is, is, the, um, is the main USP that we're talking about with Almond Bank hatchery um, near Perth. Just a really interesting story there that Mike just told me um, while we were just having a blether after the interview. Um, one hen, so with the University of Highlands and Islands, they're doing a genetic study, and one hen fish apparently spawned with 14 precocious par up this river. And they can tell that, I don't know, probably by the smokes outgoing or returning fish or whatever, probably smokes out going. I don't know if we've caught that many returning fish yet. Um, 
but that's amazing. 14 precocious par spawned with one hen, meaning that this river knows it needs to survive. There's something, something there, nature has just, uh, I don't, I, yeah, I'm not one of these spooky kind of um, folklore kind of guys, but isn't it strange that 14 precocious par spawned with one hen because this river was suffering and needed some help? That's cool. Um, yeah, who knows what else is out there? What kind of stories like that you would just never be able to make up? Um, yeah, I, I find that cool. Hopefully, you guys, you guys too, too. Anyway, beautiful spot. The light's gone now, um, as you can see, or going. Beautiful night. It'll be a lovely sunset. Um, the guys are working hard. Still. Way down there. I don't know if I can zoom on selfie. No, I can't. I'll flip it around in a minute. Um, yeah, really, really successful day filming. We got lots of egg planting done. Um, underwater footage. Couldn't do drone, unfortunately, because the train line's right there. Um, and uh, yeah, really quite chuffed with the interview as well. I thought it was excellent. Really good speaker, Mike. Uh, Marek, awesome dude as well. Uh, really knows his stuff. So yeah, in good hands, these uh, these young salmon. Who knows if it'll work? I hope it does. I really do. I'm sure it is working at the moment. I haven't quite heard any statistics yet, but I suppose once... I said, no, there was talk, there was talk of fish being seen further up. Who knows? Um, I can't verify that, so don't hold me to it at the moment. But uh, yeah, when this, once this film is out for Fisheries Management Scotland and NASCO into the year, International Year of the Salmon, um, you get a shorter title on that. I'm thinking about Just Add Salmon with a question mark at the end because it's such a polarised question, uh, hatcheries. Um, whereas very few people seem to be sitting in the middle, kind of, ah, that's why, yeah, so... I, Hopefully this this particular episode in the series that we're putting together on hatcheries um, helps with some of the questions that are out there. Um, that's that's the whole point of it. So just add salmon question mark as a question. Just add salmon. Is it as easy as that? Does it make a difference? A uh, really nice analogy we just talked about was, you know, if you have a, a goldfish bowl and you put a goldfish in it, and you feed it, then it survive, potentially. Uh, if you put 10 goldfish, bowl, goldfish in the bowl and feed the same amount as you would of one fish, what's going to happen? So is that the same? Well, as far as I'm aware, it's is that the same on, on tributaries like this and spawning burns? Um, these, these burns are can only produce or sustain so many young juvenile fish. Um, that if you put a million of anything in here, the same amount is going to be spat out at the end. Um, so you just have to get balance right. And that's that's an interesting point for people that, you know, anglers that genuinely just want to add fish. It doesn't necessarily work that way. Um, you could add a certain number of fish, but enhancement, is that is that something that we should be doing just so we catch more fish? That's that's really stocking. Um, anyway, big open question. I sit on the fence big time because professionally I have to. Um, and also when I sit on the fence, I get everybody's opinions uh, on film. So I'm very lucky to be able to do this to sit behind the camera and just listen to people's opinions, especially the people that are doing this day in, day out, and they get ribbed left, right, and center, or praise, one or the other, it's more ribbing than not. Um, these guys actually do know what they're talking about. Um, and everybody's bound by all sorts of different regulations, etc. I'm not gonna get into that here. Yeah, hopefully that explains a wee bit. Rant number two from Craig. <sighs> Pretty out of breath. <sighs> this is the fourth rant. Of course I'm out of breath. After lockdown. 
uh, fairly responsible for that. Um, yeah, it's the fourth run to go and get my gear, pick up my gear after filming. It's only about 150 yards to the truck, as you can see there. Uh, but up and down hills and over rocks and cross rivers, keeping everything dry. Most of it's in waterproof cases. Um, but yeah, there's the last wee bit down there. Last wee waterproof case, GoPro pole, painter's pole with a GoPro on it. Uh, those underwater shots. It's quite cool, I got told actually, um, maybe show you. Uh, the bailiff of the Fourth District Stanton Fishery Board, Lee, he gave me a heads up on um, a sort of hack you can do for a GoPro for underwater footage. So you can monitor the footage with your phone underwater, because Wi-Fi doesn't work underwater. So, um, my hand. So what you do is you get some coaxial cable, which is basically just aerial cable from old school TV aerial. Um, so look, get some coaxial cable. Strip back the strip back the the coating, and get some wire. Get the get the the, the core wire. Wrap it around a few times, like an electromagnet sort of stuff. Stick that into the case of the GoPro, and at the other end, stick that into the case of your phone, into the back. Now, regardless of how deep you go with a painter's pole, you know, it's telescopic, um, you'll get signal to your phone, and that's how you monitor underwater with the pole. Now, that's really cool. Uh, because the amount of times the GoPro is just off angle for underwater footage um, is uh, quite frustrating. But when you can monitor it, then you take your phone off, leave the pole there, leave it for however long the battery is going to last. I use power packs on the GoPro so that you know you can get better off seeing the river here. You can get. Uh, you know, four hours sometimes if the water temperature is any good. Stick it in the gut of a river and uh, let it record and you get, potentially, you get a fish running up by it. You know, nosing right up to it and then going past it like that. Uh, you get some really cool stuff. So yeah, I recommend people go and get a painter's pole, probably for about, I don't know, nine ninety nine or something. Quaxial cable off Amazon. Or just go and strip some off the roof or the attic of the house because you don't need it anymore with everything else we've got. Um, and just, yeah, wire it up and see how it works. Stick it in the bath, see if it works. A really, really cool way of getting some good footage, uh, monitoring your underwater GoPro footage. People get interested in how I store my gear. Um, back of the truck. So I've got these boxes which are cool. I put this decked system in, which is basically just drawers. Um, with my camera cases in, or well, the camera case, the cases come for the decked system. So what you do is you put the thing in there, and just flush, put that in there. There's a stopper there which you can switch on. Put your my tripods in there, etc. And over here. Labels on the other side, of course, because I'm a knacker, I didn't put it in right. All my camera gear, gimbal, <laughs> my personal phone number, I'll blow that out. Uh, all the camera gear, gimbal in that one. And then on that side, I've got all the drone stuff, uh, health and safety, uh, what you call it, PPE, uh, etc. Uh, fire extinguisher, all, all the things you need as a drone operator. Just happens to be colour coded with the truck, which is quite nice. Um, people see us at security risk, so I've got that camera. You know me. Uh, yeah, get the tripods in there. Get everything in. Uh, and once it's once it's in, and you close the back and put uh, switch uh, lock the central locking, you're uh, you're golden. Nobody can get in there. Uh, Unless they're extremely determined. 
extremely determined. This stuff is solid. Like, you can't even drill into it. Um, blowtorch probably do nothing except give it a facelift. Yeah, it's uh, really cool. Anyway, that's how I transport my stuff. All these boxes are waterproof, so as you can see, there's a bit of water on that. Just crossed the river. Um, you know, thousands of pounds worth of camera gear in there. And uh, across the river, no bother. Anyway, that's the system. One, put that one away in a minute. Two, up she goes. Lock that, lock away. And uh, yeah, perfectly secure. Anybody with a pickup like this, get one of these dampers. They are fantastic. So this door is super heavy, even for a big macho man like me. <laughs> you can actually get two-way damper as well. It makes it sort of feather light. Um, but when you open it, it doesn't kill your daughter as it opens, which is pretty cool. Anyway, there you go. More useless information. I'm very, very lucky. I get it. Uh, you guys can moan all you like for me being able to be out here. Um, yeah, very privileged. Alright, until next time, cheers guys, bye.